It's that time of the day again. We're back with more Assassin's Creed secrets, Easter eggs, or whatever the heck you want to call them. There are a lot of them in this franchise, and a lot of them deserve to get the spotlight, simply because I don't really see any videos going over the secrets in Assassin's Creed. Quick reminder, if you haven't seen my last video on Assassin's Creed secrets and details, be sure to check that one out too. There's some pretty cool things in that video. Now, a lot of the stuff mentioned in this video is from you guys, leaving your suggestions. If you have a secret or a reference, an Easter egg or whatnot, be sure to leave it down in the comment section below to get it featured in the next part of this video and if you do enjoy this video do consider hitting that subscribe button and with that said let's get right into it Let's start with a pretty unusual secret detail in Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Now this one is a bit strange, and it happens in your manor in Great Inagua. So on the doorway to your bedroom, there is a female NPC assassin who doesn't really do much. When you approach her, the game prompts you to press B or circle to interact. If you do, she decides to just straight up run away, which first off is not quite normal. Now naturally, your first instinct is to chase after her, hoping to uncover some hidden secret. But if you get too close, the screen goes black for a second and suddenly you're back in the bedroom bedroom of your manor with the female assassin just lying on the bed. But that's not all, there's more. Right next to the bed, there's another regular female NPC. The game prompts you to once again interact with her too. And when you do, the screen goes black again. But this time there is no chase. She just ends up in the bed next to the assassin. Now if you're pretty slow and have not figured it out by now, it certainly seems like there's some virtual off-screen action happening here if you catch my drift. Now what is actually going on here? Is this a secret feature or a strange bug? Well after doing some digging, it turns out people are divided. Some people think it's a bug, while others believe that Ubisoft got cold feet and removed the whole sex scene at the last minute. They might not have had time to remove the whole sequence, so they just cut the cutscene. Now the most reasonable theory here is that these two women in the bed are a reference to the Assassin's Creed Black Flag trailer, but more specifically this scene. Please. So what do you think? Do you think Ubisoft just shit themselves last second and removed the whole cutscene? Or do you think this was a reference to the trailer? Okay, so next up we have a secret detail or perhaps a reference in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. So this one takes place in sequence 2 which is near the start of the game. So I'm sure you've all at least played through this part. In this mission, your goal is to find a secret laboratory. Once inside, you'll come across who the game wants you to take out being David Brewster, who's busy experimenting with an apple of Eden. But he's not a secret. The secret is after you decide to take care of all the guards, you can go close up to the experimental device and look to your left. On the table near David Brewster, you'll spot the head of Saint Denis. Now this is isn't just any old artifact. It's an ancient lantern which often houses an apple of Eden inside. If this artifact looks familiar to you, well it's because the first appearance of this head of Saint Denis appeared in the previous game being Assassin's Creed Unity, but more specifically in the Dead King's DLC. This reference is a pretty cool nod to the series, but things get intense after you take down Brewster. The apple of Eden goes off destroying the lab and the historic lantern within it, and from there is the last we'd ever hear of the head of Saint Denis. Now imagine this mysterious artifact was still around in the AC universe, it would be pretty overpowered especially considering it can conjure terrifying illusions, which were said to terrify people to the point where they die of heart failure, simply because of the intense fear. I mean, it could even turn weapons even more powerful by imbuing them with magic. Now let's take it to Assassin's Creed Valhalla and focus on a pretty fun little hidden detail relating to Eivor and Hytham. So shortly after you arrive in England with your clan, Hytham teaches you how to perform a leap of faith, a move that is pretty much iconic for the franchise. And after Hytham teaches you the move, you have to follow him and leap off a nearby cliff. Now here's the fun part, if you don't immediately emerge from the hay pile that cushioned the leap of faith and wait a few seconds, Hytham will start to panic and think Eivor might have died from the leap. Take a look for yourself. Eivor, are you well? Eivor, speak! Oh dear, this is not how I foresaw things. Not at all. Dear God, Basim will have my head for this. Yeah! It's a great little hidden detail that shows off the game's sense of humor and adds a bit of character development to hide them. A character who I've never seen crack a smile. Here's a pretty cool hidden detail that relates to Assassin's Creed Syndicate, and it's one I honestly just found about thanks to you guys. Don't forget you can comment below an easter egg, secret or whatever and I'll be sure to cover it for the next part of this video. Anyway this nifty detail has to do with the carriages in Syndicate. So the idea here is that you're able to somehow not take fall damage at all whenever you land on a carriage, kind of absorbing all the damage you take. It is pretty wild, especially considering you can fall from any height, even goddamn Big Ben, just as long as you land on a carriage. 
you'll take zero damage. Now this mechanic reminds me a lot of Dying Light 1, although both games were released the same year, so it's purely coincidental. In that game you could jump off any height and safely land on a rubbish skip where it would absorb all the fall damage. So yeah, next time you're playing Assassin's Creed Syndicate, give it a try. Jump off something really high, aim for a carriage and watch how Evie or Jacob does their best Cassandra impression. So much for realism, right? Okay now let's shift our focus to a more recent Assassin's Creed game being Assassin's Creed Mirage. Now first off shout out to Slider V2 for this footage, I'm sure you already know who this person is and how many times I've featured him on this channel. Now do you know how in Mirage you're pretty much training to be an assassin in Alamut and you can see Alamut castle in the distance, well did you know thanks to some out of bounds movement you're actually able to explore a lot closer to Alamut castle than intended. I'll leave a link to the full video down in the description below to see how to do it for yourself. Now what's pretty cool about this is that Alamut castle in Mirage looks like it was intended to be used at some point during the final game. It's quite detailed and there is a lot of NPCs working around the place, so something fishy was definitely going on during development that made this castle inaccessible. It makes sense because if they did not intend for you to explore this area, why would they feature climbable objects and place NPCs there? Or maybe a DLC was intended at one point to be featured in Alamo Castle. Now unfortunately you're not able to explore the interior of the castle, instead only the outside. But regardless, this is a pretty cool little detail that anybody can do. For this particular detail, or rather details, let's go over to Assassin's Creed Origins and also Valhalla. First off, Origins. Now who has not watched Game of Thrones? Well Game of Thrones, Easter Eggs and Secrets have made their way into Assassin's Creed. Let's take a closer look at the first one. For starters, in Assassin's Creed Origins, you can buy Arya's iconic sword named Needle from vendors, although in this case it's a spear, and the description of it is to stick them with the pointy end, which is a clear nod to Arya's weapon in the show. First lesson. Sticking with the pointy end. I know which end to use. The next Game of Thrones reference can be found at the Maria military storage located in Alexandria. Once you're here, head to a table nearby and on top you'll find a note that talks about how a guard finds it boring where he's posted and he wants to relocate to the wall in the north. This is a clear reference to Game of Thrones where the wall in the north is mentioned and shown many times throughout the show. And the last Assassin's Creed Origins reference to Game of Thrones is a bit different. So you know how we have mercenaries in the game known as Falakis that hunt you down? Well one of them has the name The Hill. And if you have not figured out by now, The Hill is a cheeky alternate name of The Mountain, who is a character in Game of Thrones that's a giant knight and a feared warrior. Now this final Game of Thrones reference comes in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. You know thinking of it now, someone at Ubisoft must really love Game of Thrones to implement this many in a franchise. Anyway for Valhalla, this one is my personal favourite and it's a clear reference. So Tyrion Lannister is a character in the show, a personal fan favourite of mine. And the sky cell that he gets imprisoned in in the show can be found in Valhalla in the East Anglia region of the map. Now I don't have Valhalla on PC so unfortunately I don't have footage of it, but it's a location that's definitely worth exploring. There's even a note with dialogue straight from the show. For this one, I'm not really sure if this is a cool secret or just a bug, but since it's been in the game for many years, I would assume it's a secret. Anyway, throughout the story of Black Flag, we encounter Coleco Jack, a very charismatic and unusual character who ends up betraying us. Now he's a character that barely had any screen time which was a bit disappointing. Anyway, fast forward quite a lot to sequence 11, memory 1, and you can pay a visit to the skeleton of Jack Rackham or Coleco Jack displayed near a beach. But that's not the secret here, the secret is if you avoid alerting the guards, you can interact with the skeleton and hit it with berserk darts and it will wake up in a fit of rage and start bugging out. Now you can keep doing this as long as you have an unlimited supply of darts, alternatively you can use sleep darts, but then he'll just snooze forever. It is pretty cool that Ubisoft managed to use the same character model that Coleco Jack had throughout the game, but this time it's in a skeleton form. Okay for this secret detail, this is one I'm sure a lot of people would have known about and it occurs in Assassin's Creed 2. So during sequence 13 which I believe is also the bonfire of Vanity's DLC, you can head back to the auditory household in Florence. Here you're in for a touching moment with Ezio's family. After meeting up with Niccolo Machiavelli, go back to the house and stand in the middle of the courtyard. The game will then switch you automatically into a mode kind of similar to Eagle Vision and you'll be able to see the ghostly figures of Ezio's parents and siblings around the place. Now this encounter is a one time thing only so you can really only see this once during your playthrough. Still though, it is a pretty cool secret detail that deserves to be mentioned, especially since it relates to Ezio and his family. Who loves Star Wars? 
I know I do. I mean, I've watched every movie twice. I have a lot of posters. I've watched all the TV shows. You get the idea. I don't even know why I had to mention that. But regardless, there's a pretty amusing reference to Star Wars that's hidden away in Assassin's Creed Origins, but more specifically the Hidden Ones DLC. So in the mission, The Greater Good in the Hidden Ones, Gamelot will try to knock Baig off the platform into the water to target him with a ballista. If he manages to do this, he will say, it's over Baig, I have the high ground. Now, if you don't know, this is obviously a fun reference to the iconic duel between Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin and Mustafa in Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, where Obi-Wan delivers that iconic line before Anakin's failed attempt to leap higher along the lava banks. It's over, Bayek! I have the high ground! It's over, Anakin! I have the high ground! And last but not least, this is a personal favourite of mine in this video, so I figured I'd save it for the very end. So remember in Assassin's Creed 2 and Brotherhood, Leonardo da Vinci managed to build a flying machine that could be used by Ezio to fly around the city, of course with fires set around the city. Well the flying machine can actually be found in Assassin's Creed 3. So during the Homestead storyline which I recommend playing, the woodworker Lance O'Donnell managed to get his hands on Leonardo da Vinci's very own flying machine plans. So what he did was build the flying machine himself and give it to Connor to test out. Well unfortunately that was an epic fail because the machine needed heat to gain elevation, something that Ezio was able to do in Assassin's Creed 2. So Connor just ended up crashing into the bay at the Davenport homestead during the attempt. It's pretty amusing because after he crashes, the mission just ends abruptly with no dialogue, kind of like an awkward moment. And there you have it, those are 10 secret details or references or whatever the you want to call them in Assassin's Creed. Like I said in the intro, if you have one you'd like to see be shown in the next part for this series, be sure to comment it down below. Now let me know which out of the 10 in this video was your favourite, as well as how many you already knew about. Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and depending on when you're watching this video, be sure to also enter my Assassin's Creed Shadows giveaway, which I'll leave a link down in the description below. And with that said, I'll see you guys in the next one.